this video we are going to look at developmental milestones in preschoolers. Obviously preschoolers have made progress beyond infants and toddlers. So they are beginning to do a number of different activities, they have greater mental cognition, wider range of emotions, but it's, it's all still really beginning. So when you are evaluating books for your class and when you're discussing these books in both the videos and essays for this class, you're going to look at four elements. You're going to look at whether or not they're age appropriate. That's where the developmental issues come in. You're going to look at whether or not they're classroom appropriate. Some things might be age appropriate, uh, but are not necessarily the kind of thing that you want to deal with in your classroom. You're going to look at whether or not there are activities that would connect with the particular book that you can do or want to do in your classroom when you're the teacher. And then there are fairness issues. So. Let's go back to age appropriateness. That's where we're going to start out. In terms of cognition, preschoolers are beginning to reason. Um, preschoolers are generally known for questioning. This is the why, 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 why. Uh, spatial relationships, things up, down, big, little, what fits inside something else, those are all still developing. The concept of number sense. Uh, it's one thing to be able to count to five. It's another to understand this is five fingers. That's number sense. And then there is symbolic play. Symbolic play is when they are beginning that imaginative play where they pretend to be something else. Uh, among my granddaughters, one of them is in kindergarten and another one is young preschool and the kindergartner was trying to get the other one to pretend that they were mommy and baby and the younger one just kept saying I'm not a baby I'm not a baby she had not reached this level of symbolic play yet in terms of emotional and social development preschoolers are now not only uh, showing a wider range of emotions, things beyond happy, sad, to disappointed, anxious, uh, those kinds of emotions show up as well. And they are more and more able to verbally express and explain their emotions. Then imaginative play, we talked about symbolic play on the cogni cognition side. When we're talking emotional and social, we're looking at uh, imaginative play that now involves others. This might be another reason why that one little activity with the uh, younger preschooler didn't go well because the kindergartner was trying to do something with a, a group of people that the other one just wasn't ready for. And then the whole concept of friendship. Preschoolers oftentimes will have, you know, sort of a friend of the day. They'll come home and I have a new friend and her name is this and I played with her on the playground. The next day they'll come home and say, I have a new friend, his name is this and I played with this, on, played this on the playground. But they are developing the concept of friendship. So that's a direction you need to go. Um, in terms of our evaluating books, so you need to look at those sorts of issues. It, are they presented in the book? in a way that is not too complex for preschoolers to grab. Preschoolers who are just getting at these kinds of developmental stages. When we're looking at uh, activities that can go with a book, as a classroom teacher, you want to get the most play out of a book that you can. So you don't want to just read it and then set it down and walk away. You want to read it and then you want to be able to go to uh, stations where they have some sort of different activities. And activities range from anything from tastings to coloring to other craft things to singing songs, sometimes playing instruments. Any of those kinds of things could be activities that would go with a particular book. 
but you're going to have to look at the activities for that book and decide if they are things that you want to do in your classroom. Maybe singing is not your thing, and that's fine. There might be a whole bunch of songs that would connect with, like Sandra Boynton's board books, there are almost always songs connected with them. If you don't like singing, you don't want to have to lead singing, and maybe it's not one of your strengths, then that's fine. Just choose a different book with an activity that is something you want to do. When we're looking at fairness issues, we're looking at considerations like is the group in the book racially diverse, ethnically diverse? Uh, are there a mix of boys and girls? Those all things can be uh, questions that you want to think about when you are looking at a book that you're evaluating for your class. Take into consideration the development level, classroom appropriateness, activities you might do with it, and the question of fairness.